Hello, everybody. Welcome to the uh, Ecumenical Buddhist Society of Little Rocks. My name is Mike. Uh, I thought I would just spend a couple minutes before we actually begin um, reading a short, a couple paragraphs. It won't take me a minute at the most, probably. Um, and it's from one of our teachers in, in the Quantum School of Zen, which if you know me or watch my uh, Facebook Live videos that I post here, uh, that's my particular flavor of meditation. You know, Numbros here, Steve and Lisa and the others all have sort of different uh, backgrounds in meditation and Buddhism. And my particular one is from a Korean Zen lineage or school called the Quantum School of Zen, which is connected to the Korean Jogi lineage of, of Buddhism. And uh, one of our teachers wrote this, and I came across it this morning, and I thought I would just read it because it, I think it's uh, a great little story. So forgive me while I'm looking at my down on my phone here for a moment while I read this. And this is from Rebecca Ate, who is, again, one of our teachers. When I was in nursing school, I read an interesting study that helped lead me to this path of the Buddha. The researchers had a large fish tank, and they placed a pane of glass bisecting the middle of it. On one side, they placed young goldfish, fed them, cared for them, and then let them grow. The fish could see the other side of the tank, but every time they approached the other side, they would bump against that portion of the glass. Well, after many weeks, the researchers removed the glass partition to see what the fish would do. Even when the freedom to explore the whole tank, the goldfish remained in their half of the tank. The barrier that had grown with remained in their minds and they could not see a way to the other side. And this is her commentary on the story. We are like the goldfish in that tank. We have this conditioned mind that won't allow us to see what we are missing. Our way of looking at and relating to the world obscures our own morning star experience. What if we let go of this I that believes so strongly in itself? What if we let go of likes and dislikes, our opinions, our biases, our prejudices? To let go of that I may sound frightening, but in letting go of clinging to anything, we find that it, the Buddha referred to, the one pure and clear thing that is infinite, open and full of compassion, our true nature. I hope that my talking about Buddhism or the Buddha doesn't in any way turn you off because that's not the intention here of these these Facebook live meditations. It's not to talk about Buddhism per se. It's really more meditation. But um, and so please don't misunderstand my sharing that with you. It just is something that I thought was really interesting because it, it, regardless of whether you're Buddhist, Christian, Muslim, atheist, whatever, I think you can relate to that fish tank story. Um, how interesting that we, uh, we we limit ourselves to how we see the world, as Rebecca says, this I that is formed by our likes, our dislikes, our opinions, our prejudices, our biases. This is what forms the I, for me, Mike, for you, whatever your name is, but the Mike, if you know me, is very much formed by these opinions and likes and dislikes, etc., etc. But they are like that glass partition. They wall us off, you know, um, from the rest of the world. And what we don't realize, of course, is that there is no glass partition. We've created that I. We've created that block. But really, there is no difference. It is all one water. There may be a glass partition that separates the fish from one side to another or separates you from me, but we're not swimming in the glass. We're swimming in the water, which is all of us, which is common to all of us. And that barrier is really our mind that creates these barriers. So I won't get any more deeper than that because I think we could really go down a rabbit hole and 
and uh, have a lot of fun with that. And it would be probably much more fun to do it in person and, or you know, have some conversation as opposed to me just rambling about it. But feel free to uh, drop a comment in if you have a thought about that or a feeling um, or if you found it helpful or not. But um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. So what we'll do here is we're going to move into our three or five minutes or so of guided meditation, and then we'll move into roughly 15 minutes or so of just uh, silent meditation. Uh, I'm watching my laptop battery here, and, I, and I'm starting to realize it may run down very low before we finish this video. So um, if for some reason I disappear close to the noon hour, <laughs> You know that it's my laptop battery. I apologize because I'm in a different room. I kind of didn't prepare for that. Um, so anyway, but let's go ahead and move in. I'm in a chair today because I've had some knee issues, and I think being in a chair is a little bit more comfortable for me today. Um, so wherever you are uh, in a chair or if you're on a cushion at home, that's great. Just find some place comfortable where you get some support behind your back. So uh, I'd encourage you not to sit on a kind of mushy sofa or the edge of a bed if you can, because that, that softness tends to make you collapse your spine and sort of have it crunch in on each other. You want something firm beneath your tailbone so you can sit up more or less comfortably just this year. So take a moment to um, just check in with yourself as you get yourself comfortable. Maybe if you need to twist a little bit of the torso or do a few shoulder rolls, head rolls, just to kind of hit the reset button on your body. And then again, find a moment to just scan and check in with everything, letting your mind's eye sort of go through from the top of your head all the way down, gradually, slowly at your own pace but going all the way down to your toes, just checking it out, just letting your awareness come to every part of your body and just noticing what's going on in every part of your body. Maybe you feel a little achiness in your back or a little tightness in your chest. Maybe you can Notice that you're furring your brows or your face is tight. Whatever that is, just check in with your body, check in with yourself. Noticing what's going on. Not trying to change anything, by the way. You're not. Uh, if you do notice any tension or discomfort, tightness, don't be upset about that. Don't try and change it. Don't lament it or wish it away or regret that you're having any discomfort right now. Why don't you instead try and just bring some kindness to that part of your body where you're feeling, again, either tight or sore or a little bit of pain or discomfort, what would it be like if you show that part of your body some kindness and acceptance, some understanding? You might feel that tension or that discomfort release a little bit. You might suddenly realize it doesn't bother you as much as you thought it did. Why? Maybe because you're not resisting it. You're not fighting it. You're just letting it be. And this sense of equanimity, letting things be, is pivotal and central to a meditation practice. Just letting things be as they are without fighting them or judging them, wishing them away.
nor do you need to get tangled up with it and think about it and wonder about it and try and understand it. You don't have to do that either. You're just letting it be, acknowledging what's going on, but not letting it pull you in and get you trapped or caught. Don't have to take the bait. Just notice it. So having said that, we're going to now kind of move into roughly 15 minutes, maybe a little bit under, of just silence sitting here together and then we'll have a few announcements here at the end right before we go about our day.
7.30 Central. Mm. So have a wonderful week, and thanks so much uh, for joining. And please, be well. Take care of yourself.